first up today, Rosemary Kennedy, who is John F. Kennedy's sister, spent much of her life living at St. Coletta in Jefferson, mm. Wisconsin. That's an institution for people who have developmental disabilities. Our next guest, Elizabeth Kaler Pentecoff, often visited Rosemary throughout her childhood because her aunt was Rosemary's devoted caretaker, driver, and travel companion for more than 30 years. Her memoir is now out. It's called The Missing Kennedy, Rosemary Kennedy, and the Secret Bond of Four Women. It was recently featured as the cover story in People magazine, so you saw it there, and it has the support of family members because many of them feel the author's aunt was a member of the family. Yeah, we are thrilled to welcome Elizabeth to the Yellow Couch mm -hmm. today. She's going to be the keynote speaker at the Southeast Wisconsin Festival of Books. We're going to give you yeah. more details about that, but first we're going to chat with her. So nice to Great meet to you. Great to have you here. Well, it's great to be here. Thank, Thank you. you yeah. for your time. It's a fascinating story, and I think if you really know anything about Rosie Kennedy, as people called her, you're disturbed because you know that her do her uh, doctors um, and her father um, mm -hmm. approved a lobotomy when she was just 23 years old. The thing that's, that is important to note, I think, is that her father's intentions were really good. But she's this beautiful young woman who has really not a very severe problem, right? What, Correct. What was her issue or her problem? Well, she was diagnosed as mentally retarded, uh, or we'd say mentally challenged today, but it is thought now that she suffered from uh, a variety of learning disabilities. Mm. Uh, I saw her early work as a child, and she switch her letters, uh, you know, back and forth. Like um, dyslexia. That, exactly, exactly. She had a problem with re writing and reading, but um, she could actually do quite successfully with her math problems. And she added three three-digit numbers together. And so, you know, it's, it was spotty. And mm -hmm. she, of course, also was very naive, socially naive. And so she was required to have someone with her at all time, which of course she did not like as she grew into a teenager. Uh, and then when mental illness symptoms usually come on in the teenage years, unfortunately she demonstrated uh, agitated depression is what they called it. She could have been bipolar. Mm. She had very violent temper tantrums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So her father sought out this experimental brain surgery with good intentions to help her. Is that how she came to end up in Jefferson, Wisconsin after the lobo lobotomy? What yes. happened during yes. that she, procedure? Unfortunately, the procedure robbed her of much of her personality. Mm. She no longer could uh, talk, walk, uh, take care of her very basic needs. She had to learn how to, you know, hold a fork and a spoon. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, she even was more angry now. And she had to have uh, two attendants with her at all time because she was so physically strong. Uh, and then um, she did eventually uh, find herself at St. Coletta. Uh, Joe had a recommendation by um, a uh, Cardinal Cushing at the time mm -hmm. to take her there. And so Joe had a house built for her on the grounds of St. Coletta that was lovely. And there is where my aunt um, started her relationship with Rosemary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to talk about your aunt and their, their unique bond yeah. too. But what about the Kennedy family? Did you know when you met her as a child that she was from a famous family? And how much contact did they have with her? In the beginning, uh, we were not allowed to visit her because Joseph had taken the advice of the doctors to stay away because it was just too emotionally traumatic for her to have visitors. And so he, for like two decades, right? Oh yes. She didn't see any family, 20 no years, siblings, no, no parents, mm. no grandparents, no, no one. Nope. And then when Joe had his stroke, ironically robbing him of the ability to communicate and to walk, uh, nuns could no longer contact Joe for uh, Rosemary's care, so then they reached out to Mrs. Kennedy. And as soon as Mrs. Kennedy found out the truth of her whereabouts and what had happened to her, uh, you know, she and uh, Rosie's siblings began visits. Mm. And then later, um, they all and they also said, you know, let her out, let her socialize, let yeah. her meet people, let her go to restaurants and church. And along with my aunt's loving care, this made Rosemary blossom. And these are her two sisters she's with in this picture? Yes, Eunice and Jean. Aww. And so Rosemary, you know, went to all of their family's homes, too, and Sister Paulus accompanied her. And Jean right now is the only living Kennedy. Correct. Correct. And um, what does she say about Rosie Kennedy? 
Uh, she is quiet on the subject, mm -hmm. and I don't blame her at all. That's her family, it's yeah. her privacy. However, uh, her nephews, um, Eunice Shriver Kennedy's um, children, were very enthusiastic about the book, partially because they also loved Rosie, and they were unsure what was going on at the time, too. And especially Anthony, Anthony Shriver, who started Best Buddies, mm -hmm. um, uh, pairing able-bodied uh, students with the disabled. Uh, he spent a lot of time with his aunt, and so he told me that Sister Paula like, was like a member of his family, mm -hmm. just as Rosie was a member of ours. Yeah, so best buddies, other things. Uh, there's been immense good that's come from the tragedies of Rosemary's life, including Special Olympics. How Absolutely. is that connected? Well, Eunice uh, discovered by being at St. Coletta that a lot of uh, people with challenges had weight issues. And, you know, they weren't always very coordinated. So she said, you know, hey, let's get them in a program where they can have fun and compete yeah. and, and enjoy themselves and be healthy. So she started Camp Shriver in 1962 in her very own backyard. Hmm. And then that blossomed into Special Olympics in 1968. Which wow. is a huge organization. Yeah. It gives me chills, actually, because the athletes who participate, it's like they will wait mm -hmm. all year long for Special Absolutely. Olympics. It's the, the most wonderful program. I mm -hmm. think a lot of people here at the station are involved in it as well. Wonderful. When you met Rosie Kennedy, was John F. Kennedy president? Yes. Uh, well, actually, yes. I would, I would have been four, and that would have been 1962. Mm -hmm. So when he was assassinated, of course, most people who were alive then uh, always remember exactly where they were. Yeah. And my response was very deep for someone who was in you know first grade i was five at the time because she was my friend and i knew that it was her brother who was being killed was mm. she aware of it and did yes. they have a close bond because there's a there's a cute picture i saw in your book mm -hmm. of the two of them they had a close bond uh, unfortunately he uh, did not visit rosemary and he uh, although she did know that he was president and I believe that she understood everything that was going on mm. and they too, uh, Rosemary with the nuns, did watch the proceedings on television. It was very somber and sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah There's sure. so much uh, fascinating information in your book, uh, so much insight into the Kennedys. You've got this keynote presentation Saturday at 2 o'clock and then a book signing for The Missing Kennedy, your book, um, at 3 p.m. It's at the University of Wisconsin, Waukesha. You can learn more about the Southeast Wisconsin Book Fest at sewibookfest.com. That's what's putting on the entire event. It'll be great. You can get a copy there, have you sign it, hear a little bit more from that keynote, and um, really learn more about that missing Kennedy. Congrats on all your success and um, you. great story to be shared. Yeah, really nice to meet you. Thank you so Good much. To meet you.